Well, first, I would like to thank Brian for inviting me here. Um, and um, I'll, I'll be talking about some new developments um, that has gone on um, at the IUCR office in Chester. Um, I should say that I'm in, in my uh, um, second life. I'm a section editor of Acta Crystallographica Section F, um, Structural Biology and Crystallization Communications. And um, what Tony said about um, um, chemists and, uh, and not wanting to um, write in SIF or using Pubble SIF is probably even more true for the biological community. I mean, uh, our main customers or authors are biologists and biochemists, and um, we, we, we have to go even lighter um, in, in, in the sense to make um, things easier for those guys. Now, um, to give you a little bit of, of background, uh, what be, uh, well, before I talk about Pubble Bio itself, I, I want to give you some uh, motivation slides, um, why we started um, to work on that. Now, as of Tuesday, there were about uh, 93,000 um, st structures in the protein data bank, um, and uh, close to 90% of these are X-ray structures. In 2012, there were close to 9,000 structures deposited, um, so that's um, almost 10% of the of the total content of the PDB, and even taken into account that 2012 was a leap year, this is 24, more than 24 structures a day. That's about one structure every hour that uh, is added to this archive. Yeah? Every day, even Saturdays, Sundays, and bank holidays. Now, um, if we, if you do a text search on a PDB with a phrase to be published, um, um, this reiterates what, what John Westbrook uh, said earlier today in the discussion, uh, this returns close to 20,000 hits. That means that um, a lot of these structures, um, they do not have an associated publication. Um, and um, on a slightly different uh, note, Acta Crystallographica F, published in 2012, 264 crystallization communications. Um, so there is some differences in these numbers, and uh, this, in my eyes and in the eyes of um, a lot of other people, uh, does require some action. So we have, obviously, a backlog in publishing. A lot of these structures that are not published, I, I should say, come from uh, the so-called uh, structural genomics initiatives, where the production of structures was actually put in the foreground, um, and um, uh, um, publication of it was sort of put on, put aside, and it takes time, and it's yeah, tedious, and people then just don't do it. Um, this also leads to um, a loss of information, obviously, because what is in the database is not everything that uh, um, a possible consumer or reader or, or somebody who wants to, um, to work, to do some work uh, on the same structure need to know. And um, this is, of course, one of the reasons why, why we embarked on this uh, Pubble Bio project. Now, um, I, I mentioned already there is, um, in, in principle, we do need um, two types of uh, publications. One I call crystallization communications and one is a, a structural communication. Um, you may wonder whether the, uh, the first one is just you know, part of the way to the second one. This is uh, certainly true. But um, as long as authors still fancy this type of publication, and as long as we still get enough requests to publish such papers, um, we will probably do this. Now, um, the Pubble Bio idea is um, we want to help authors in writing a publication effectively and quickly. So ideally, um, um, a manuscript, um, or an author should be able to finish a manuscript in a day or so. Yeah. Um, also, uh, we want, would like to facilitate the editing and also the refereeing. We want to capture at least some of the un unpublished structures in the PDB. Um, we want to ensure that crystallization information is not lost and uh, well, Ideally, this information should be mineable, and this is where some of the SIF stuff comes into play. Um, if, if we capture information in tabular form, in principle, we should uh, be able um, to 
store this away in CIF or MMCIF format. So what we did is we created publication templates um, and um, with tables um, which should enable us to capture the most relevant information in, in tabular form. Um, and these tables, they can be populated automatically from an existing PDB file or from an, from an MMCIF file. Um, these are files which are available to the author when a structure has already been deposited with a PDB. Um, or one could start such a publication project um, uh, from scratch and start to fill in things from the um, lab, uh, lab book by hand. And um, the system should also be somehow linked to the um, IUCR submission system in, in order to um, pipe it quickly into uh, to the editorial office in Chester, to the um, corresponding co-editor and, and referees and, and so on. Um, right now, there is um, two versions of this um, Pubble Bio, um, which we call Pubble Bio Annotator. This is a, a, a tool for editing MMCIFs, so you can basically read in an MMCIF, or you can start from scratch and write out an, an MMCIF. And there is Pubble Bio Publisher, and this is what I want to um, um, talk about today, um, a tool for writing and submitting articles. I should also say that I cannot really walk you through the um, whole thing, but if you're interested, um, and there's an IU, IUCR stand in the, um, um, in, uh, in the exhibition um, area during this meeting. Uh, I'd be happy to show you more if you want to know more. All right, so let's get started. Um, when you log on to your, um, um, to the, to publbio.iucr.org, you can log on using your IUCR ID. Yeah, then, um, of course, if you do this the first time, then you are faced with an empty list of projects. Uh, then you can, um, th then you will have to start a new project. If you have done this before, um, let's see, this is, uh, you you have a list of the projects that you have already worked on. Now let's pretend we want to start a new one. Uh, uh, this is done here. You can either enter a PDB code or you can upload an MMCIF file or a PDB file which you have stored on your um, hard disk or you can write an article without a data source. Yeah. Um, let's um, assume we work on a structural communication, um, a, a template which looks like this. It almost looks like uh, it has already a structure of a paper. If you read in a PDB file, um, you're immediately faced with a look like this. So it has already populated the title taken from the PDB file or the MMC file again, uh, the author list, uh, keywords, um, and I will show you a few more things that um, um, has already gone into this manuscript um, from the header of the PDB file or the MMC file. Um, all these um, um, Sections here um, are, are, are text sections, so you can just um, uh, click anywhere um, into the text and, and start to edit this. You can, uh, if you have some text written in a, in a Word document or somewhere else, you can also just uh, uh, cut and paste it in there. That's, um, that is working as well. You can add authors uh, by just um, typing in their um, 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 IUCR IDs, for instance, um, retrieving all the author details from the world directory. Um, you, um, also, if you have in a previous um, project used um, um, some authors, you can um, retrieve the information into, into a new project so that all these fields are easily populated. Um, each of the sections synopsis, abstract, introduction, and, and so on, materials and methods, um, will give a, a short description what is required. There is still some work to be done. Uh, we would like to guide the authors by asking specific questions, what they may want to answer in these questions. Um, up, up here, um, Pablo Bio um, counts the words that have been written, and, uh, and this section turns red when the, when the word limit is exceeded. Yeah, currently, we do not impose any word limits, but we warn the authors if they write too much. Um, 
we, uh, the tables I mentioned already, they are pre-filled from um, data in the MMSIF or the PDB or, um, or whatever users had. Um, for instance, this is uh, uh, table one um, titled macromolecule production information. And what we would like to know is you know, what source organism this is from, what, what is the DNA source, um, what is the expression host, um, and uh, most importantly, the um, the complete amino acid sequence of the construct produced. So, so this is all automatically filled in if it's available, if not to be asked the authors um, to, uh, to fill in. And currently we are, um, the, uh, the, the discussion is centered around uh, which of these uh, um, uh, table entries are made, or have to be made mandatory and, and which ones, or be, and for which ones we can be a bit more lenient. Um, this is why I, um, italicize this one here, um, the, the, the final layout of the table is um, not yet defined, not yet fixed. <clears throat> um, same here with um, table four, structure refinement. All of the um, relevant numbers are automatically put into the table. Some of the numbers are calculated from uh, what is found in the MMC file or uh, is derived from numbers in the, in the MMC file and is not necessarily correct um, because there might be errors, obviously, and uh, these numbers are flagged in bold and uh, the authors are asked to check them and um, the, uh, basically to tick them off and say that um, these are indeed correct and that they can be published in this way. Um, figures. Um, there is some uh, templates or some, some ideas for figures um, are, um, are given. Figures can be uploaded. Um, of course, then they have to be uh, prepared uh, before. Uh, figures, when they are in the paper already, can be, um, can be removed. Um, one can move figures around and, and um, basically define where they should um, appear in the paper. And uh, maybe most importantly, we try to give the authors uh, some ideas of what what they might want to present as figures. Yeah. For instance, if they work on an oligomeric protein, um, then um, very often the, the first figure they want to show is the is the actual protein oligomer with the with the different subunits highlighted in in, in different colors. And um, currently, we have a, a maximum of I think three figures that we allow. Um, if if authors want to have more, we, uh, we can always um, um, put them into supplementary material. Yeah. Captions, of course, can be added to the figures. And well, as I said, up to three figures are allowed. <clears throat> so the paper is finished now, hopefully. Um, as um, user author has provided some text. Um, then uh, a review PDF can be um, generated for proofreading. And then the project can be shared with the co-authors. So you can um, put in the email addresses. Um, or, um, or actually, they, they, they should be automatically there. And then uh, by just clicking one button, the paper goes out to all of your co-authors and they are asked to read the paper and or, uh, to read the manuscript and provide their comments um, again online in um, in the system and uh, this comes back to you and then you can uh, you maintain the control over this manuscript and you can decide which comments or, or which modifications to accept and uh, which ones not and finally when you're done. When you have incorporated all the suggestions from your co-authors, you click on this button and it automatically goes into the uh, submission system to Acta Christ F. Yeah, then uh, you enter the submission system. Um, some of you are probably familiar with that. At, at the stage where you choose, where you're able to choose the co-editor who you would like to handle your paper. And then it goes um, the, the usual way from, from then on. Um, when you get um, the co-editor, then of course invites referees. The referee reports come back. You, you will uh, receive the referee reports, and then you can go back um, to this um, system 
make the necessary changes to your article and, um, and, and resubmit, resubmit it as a revised version. So in, in summary, um, what we have done is um, we have defined the content um, and um, the layout of two structured article types. The, the content is more or less standard, so we, we basically we know what we would like to have, and uh, we tell the authors what we would like to have. The, relevant, the most relevant information we would like to have in tabular form and not in text form, because then we can easily harvest that and, um, and, and produce some um, MMCIF output, which we then can use to, to complement the MMCIF, which is already in the PDB, for instance. Um, these um, um, st uh, structured article types are they should be easy to work with, um, and they are linked, or they uh, should be should re remain linked to the IUCR submission system. So, if you like, you can try this out yourself. If you like it, tell your friends and colleagues. If you think it's crap and needs serious mending, then tell me, <laughs> and um, then. I I'll move on to the last slide. There's a number of people involved. Um, most of all is Simon Westrup from the IUCR office who's doing um, most of the, um, of, of the technical work behind the scenes. So without him, this would, would not at all work. John Westbrook from the PDB who's uh, in, in the room was uh, very much involved in the beginning with all these MMCIF definitions. Uh, Janet Newman. Um, one of our co-editors was also instrumental in, in providing some of the feedback. Um, um, most importantly for, um, de uh, for defining the content of the uh, table that describes the protein crystallization. Um, Louise Jones and um, Howard Einsbar from the um, Acta F team also have contributed significantly. And with this, I think I would like to stop and close and thank you for your attention.